Welcome back kiddos to another episode of Drawing with Trogo and today we're going to be looking at how to draw a city in the style of Faith Ringgold. And Faith Ringgold is an artist who uses her heritage, that means her history and her culture, and she uses them as her inspiration for her artwork. And here's a picture of a quilt that she painted on. That's right, she painted on a quilt of this girl dreaming about Harlem. And this is a picture of Harlem, which is a city in New York. And as you can see, this city is going to be the inspiration for our artwork that we're going to make today. And what's nice about this painting right here is we're going to learn how to overlap. And that's going to make things look more 3D as some things are in front of other things. That's what overlapping is. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm going to start with my pencil and I'm going to draw my first building right here. And it's going to be the building that's in the front. And it's just a simple rectangle up over down. I'm not worrying if it's like a little slanted or anything. No big deal. I'm drawing lightly in case I mess up. Put another building right beside it. A little bit taller because I don't want all the buildings to be the same. And now I'm going to draw another building, but this building is going to be behind the other two buildings. So I just connect it from one to the other. And you can't see some of that building. That's overlapping. I'll draw another building connected to that one. All right, and here's another little bit of overlapping right here. And also, some of the building is cropped off. Like you can't see the, the end of that building because it goes off the page. All right, that's cropping. You can crop on your like iPhone. Draw another building right there. So right now my left side is really dense, so I need to go over here to the right and draw another little building. I'm trying to make sure that they're all different shapes and sizes. Another overlapping right behind it, just go up and over. And then I think I'm just going to connect these with the little staircase type building. This goes up over, all right, and it's behind those two other buildings. All right, another building right here on the right, also cropped off. And I think I can do another building right here on the top. This one's a little tricky. It's going to have kind of like a little slant, and then it goes straight there at the top. It's kind of like a triangle, but the top was cut off of it. All right, and then my last building is going to have a staircase on the top. So it's going to go up, and then it's going to go over, up, over, up, over. Kind of like a staircase, just up, over, up, over. Just you want to make sure that you're doing the same on both sides. And then I've got all of my buildings drawn out. Now, I'm going to start drawing some windows, but I don't want to go crazy with the windows because you're going to have to paint around them. So like each building, I'm just going to do like maybe three or four uh, windows. Now, your buildings can maybe be a little bit different. You know, every city's different. You can put your windows in different spots, but this is where I'm putting mine. I'm trying to make sure that the buildings look different, but I'm also not trying to draw a million windows because you're going to have to paint around it and it'll take a lot of time. You might get bored and frustrated with how much time it's taking to paint. So I'm not going crazy with my windows. And then as soon as I'm done, with the windows, with the drawing of the pencil, I'm gonna get my crowns out and I'm gonna use a black crown and I'm gonna trace over all of the pencil on my city. And the reason why I'm doing this is because crowns are made out of wax and when you start to paint, those wax lines will help keep the paint from mixing with other colors of paint. It won't stop it completely, but it helps a lot from colors touching. Now I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to sit here and watch me trace the whole thing. So it's okay if you pause the video or if you need to ever rewind the video. That's all right too. And don't worry if your buildings are different than mine. It's okay. Every city's different. All right. That's the nice thing about art. I kind of base this a little bit off of Indiana, Indianapolis. So do the best you can. All right. Now a fun thing you can do is you can take a white crown and I'm going to draw a couple little white dots up in the sky. Now since crowns are made out of a wax, it will resist the water. It'll kind of protect the paper underneath it. So anytime I put a little white dot, when I go to paint, blue paint over the sky, those white dots are gonna stay white and keep the paper underneath it protected from our blue paint. All right, so I'm gonna start using my watercolor paint. Now, if you don't wanna use watercolor and you wanna use crowns or you wanna use colored pencils, that's fine, but I'm using watercolor paint. It's only like 90, 97 cents or something like at Walmart. Uh, so if you wanna use watercolor paint, you can. and as I'm painting, I'm doing my best to make sure I stay in the lines. I'm being careful. Now, most buildings aren't orange, but Faith Ringgold's buildings were super colorful, and so I remember since I'm trying to copy her style, I'm using uh, the bright colors that she used. And since I'm using orange, I want to make sure that I use orange on every building that I want to use orange on. I'm not going to switch colors in between. I want to use orange, and then as soon as I'm done with orange, then I'm going to switch colors. And then, like, maybe after orange, I'll do red, and then I'll use red and then I'll use red until I'm done. 
Now watercolor gets its name because you are taking this water and you're turning it into the color. These little ovals that you see, these little cakes, all right? The water mixes with that color and it turns that color. That's why it's called watercolor. Now you gotta be careful with paintbrush. Now paintbrushes are not pencils. Like I'm not pressing down hard to get color from. Like on a pencil, if you press down hard, you'll get a darker color. For watercolor, if you want it to be a brighter color, you gotta swirl your paintbrush in that little oval for a little bit longer. The longer you, little, you twirl it in the paint, the brighter the color is going to be. If you just kind of like take your water, uh, your brush, and dip it in the water, and then dip it in the, the oval, it's going to be really light colored. So depending on what color you want, if you want it to be a light color or a dark color, it really depends on how long you swirl your paintbrush in the watercolor. All right, now let's switch to green. You'll probably notice that I am speeding up some of my video. All right, this took me a little bit of time. And so if you want to, after you use a color, like let's say you paint orange, you can go take like a 10, 15 minute break and come back and let that orange paint be dry. But since I'm being really careful and the black crown has kind of helped create little walls to keep, you know, my green mixing from my orange and red, all right, I'm being really careful to make sure they don't mix. Because these colors, sometimes colors when they mix, they make really pretty colors, especially if they're close to each other on the color wheel. But if they're like opposite sides of the color wheel and they mix, they can make some, uh, you know, some unwanted colors that you don't want to see. Now a pro tip that artists do is rotating the paper. Rotating the paper allows you to get to areas of your drawing or your painting without having to compromise other areas. So you can see that some of the red paint and the green paint is still wet and I don't want the bottom of my hand to get into that wet paint because it might smudge it and might bring some of that green into the red. And so what I do is I'm moving my paper around so that it's easier to get to some spots and I don't have to lay my hand on my painting. And so you got to be careful that when you are drawing. If you've drawn a lot with a pencil, sometimes you'll notice that the bottom of your hand gets really charcoaly and gray and graphitey, and that's because your hand's rubbing against the paper right there. It's really hard, but you really want to try to keep your hand from touching the paper. All right, now onto the final color, blue, my blue sky. Now I'm going to keep my picture upside down so that I'm not getting any of those buildings with the bottom of my hand. And I'm also making sure that I'm adding a lot of water to the blue. You'll notice that sometimes I go, instead of getting more blue paint from the oval, I get a little bit of blue paint and then I keep adding water to it. All right, I don't want this to be a super dark blue. I want it to be kind of like a medium blue. And so I'll keep getting more water to spread out the blue paint that's already on the paper. So I keep getting more water to get a little bit of blue paint, and then I get some more water. I just add the water to it, all right? This will make your blue paint go further. A lot of times people use too much blue, and it's usually the first color that goes in your watercolor. And so you'll find that like almost all your other watercolors are still like completely full, and then the blue's completely gone. And then you can't do sky or water anymore. So you gotta be careful, use, uh, you know, you gotta be conservative with your blue paint, thin it out with some water. Let's turn it over and we are all done with our Faith Ringgold City. Well kiddos, I hope you had fun drawing our city in the style of Faith Ringgold. Make sure you keep, stay tuned. Well kiddos, I hope you had fun drawing our city in the style of Faith Ringgold. Make sure you keep watching and keep practicing and I'll see you next time on Drawing with Trouble.